Hey, welcome to the Keto Mom page. My name is Stephanie, and we're diving into mindset, our mindset. We're diving into our mindset. So as you're tuning in, where are you tuning in from? It's a little bit later this morning. Uh, I was not slacking off. I already got my workout in. I already read all of the things that I usually do in the morning. I actually was waiting for um, one of my nieces to show up. So I didn't want to be in the middle of the live while waiting for her to get here. I had to wake up the girls. And so it's been a little bit of a busy morning, but it's been great. So as you're tuning in, where are you tuning in from? We're going to dive into this book. We are on, we are on chapter one, no, two, chapter two. Uh, let me look just to make sure. Uh, yesterday and the last few days, we've been talking about the power of desire. We're in chapter two, and actually we're just going to finish it. So if you're tuning in here every single day, I'm going to give you a very brief overview of the book. If you're reading the book along with me and you like to follow the pages, which many of you do, we're on page 52 and I just went to the end of the chapter. So we're going to finish chapter two. Why? Because it's basically three different stories and it's really going over. We talked about the really nitty gritty of if I give you... Like yesterday, we talked about the power of desire and the difference between wishing and actually being ready and wishing and hoping and actually taking action and believing that you can do it. Do you have the desire to go after what you want? That's the basics of chapter two. So as he finishes up this chapter, he just simply shares with you three different stories about burning desire and what it can look like in your life. And I'll give you the very basic overview. Napoleon Hill who is the author, uh, tells about one, the story about one of his sons. His son was born with no ears and not even holes in his head to be able to hear sound. And yet, Napoleon refused to accept the fact that his son would not speak and would not hear in his life. And so what's so interesting is when you read stories, or how often do you read stories of people defying the odds, right? You see those people, whether they're in wheelchairs or they're doing crazy things that you would have said, I never would have thought they would have done that, right? And if you look deep down, it was the burning desire of not giving up and seeing something differently than other people have seen it. So Napoleon Hill shares his story of the doctors telling him that his son would never, ever hear, would never speak uh, they said, um, and if you want context, I don't think I ever said this, but Napoleon Hill was born in 1883. Um, and I mean, this book was written years and years and years ago, right? So they didn't have the technology that we have today. And he was told by the doctors, your son would always be a mute. What's interesting is Napoleon Hill understood the power of desire he understood the power of your words, and he says it right here. Our only limitations are those we set up in our own minds. He says our only limitations are the ones that we set up in our own minds. Clearly, my dogs are my dogs are awake. <laughs> I hope you are awake. And so I want you to know something. If you would have been his friend back in the early 1900s, and you would have said, and you would have known his son who was born with no ears, physically couldn't see them and there was no holes to hear, it would have been easy to, to assume with your eyes that he would have never been able to hear. But Napoleon Hill shares his story and shares his journey about his son. And he says, from the day that he was born, I refused to accept that my son wouldn't hear. So what he did as a dad is he spoke over his son, even at infancy and into toddlers. And he told him, you will hear, you will defy the odds you are going to be able to hear and speak. And he just spoke that over himself and over his son for years and years and years. And if you continue to read on into the story later on, with the help of some technology and with the belief that his son never doubted, his son believed his dad. And so they worked on it. They worked on it. They believed. they spoke at it. And through technology and through the belief system and not giving up, his son was able to hear. And so it's pretty incredible. He says uh, he planted a seed in his child's mind of an attitude of faith in himself that he would succeed. And so how often, well, let me back up. 
We talk about the power of our mind. He says it right here, right? Our only limitations are those we set up in our own minds. That's why I talk so highly and really press into the fact that if you work on your mindset every single morning and you really truly have the desire, you will get what you want. There's not a time frame, right? He, I think it was by the time he was 18 that they had the technology. He had worked on hearing all the way up to then. He had, they had found that he was hearing slight, um, slight noises and sounds. I just want you to know something. Also, the desires that you have, and if you are believing and you've got the faith, there's one more thing I need you to pay attention to, and it's the power of your words, right? If you're constantly saying, I will never, and I have to, and that won't be me, uh, or uh, I'm always going to be fat. Oh, it's des it was in my family. It's genetics. It's always going to be this way. Then you're, always, then you're going to get what you speak, right? Napoleon Hill refused to speak that over his son and truly spoke life. He had faith. He had belief. And he poured that into his son. So as his son got older, his son didn't have anything else but to expect that he would hear. He just expected it. And so um, reason told him plainly that there was no adequate compensation for the lack of hearing and natural hearing equipment. Desire backed by faith pushed reason aside and inspired him to carry on year after year, speaking truth over his son, believing that his son would hear. And so, you know, this story is, is you know, a dramatic story. He also talks about an opera singer who was told she would never sing. She didn't have the look and the appearance, uh, but they underestimated the, the underestimated the power of her desire and her voice. And she went on to change lives and be an incredible opera singer. Uh, there was one more story at the very end. I'm trying to remember. I think we actually kind of go through six or seven pages. So it was a little bit longer to read through. Um, but he just talks about the burning desire. I believe in the power of desire backed by faith because it truly changes people's lives. So between the story of his son, the story of the opera singer, oh, there was one more and now there were so many different things. I really want you to think about the power of your voice and what you're believing and what you're speaking. I think I've told you guys this story before of people kind of downgrading the fact that we have four daughters. Not downgrading, but like people love to tell you what they think. And if you don't stand up for your own desires and your own beliefs and you let other people talk at you and talk to you and either plant negative seeds in your mind and you don't reject it or you don't stand up for what you believe, it's going to plant a seed, which will plant a seed, which will ultimately probably determine your outcome, right? Uh, I know what I believe. I know the things and the power that we have here and here and in our family and the power of our words. So if somebody speaks something at me that I don't agree with, I immediately cut it off. Immedi I, I'm like, I reject that. I'm so sorry. I'm not receiving that. Nope. I will not receive that. And so I know you might be like, what does it have to do if somebody speaks words at me? I will not receive a negative a negative seed. I will not let somebody tell me how my children are going to grow up, what they're going to be like as teenagers, uh, what it's going to be like as a mom, mom of all daughters. Nope. I know what we're going to see. I've already spoken it over our girls. They will be best friends. They will be respectful daughters. They will have character and they will have integrity. They're not going to be like all the other daughters. They're not going to be like all of the other girls. It doesn't mean that we're not going to work through challenges, but I'm not going to accept the fact that, oh, you just wait till they hit puberty. Oh, you just wait. You just wait. I don't like that you just wait. I'm not waiting. I'm taking action on it right now. Uh, we are teaching our daughters who they are and uh, helping them become who God's created them to be. And nobody's words are going to take that away from me. Period. Dot com. So I know that's also a totally different idea and concept than fat loss and health and your fitness, but I just want you to pay attention to what you're speaking over yourself and what others are. And don't accept other people's negative seeds. You don't have to. Other people's negative words, you don't have to. Uh, what do you think people told Napoleon Hill for years when they saw his son didn't have any ears, but yet he was saying, my son will hear. He had burning desire and faith that his son would hear and he did. And if he would have just went, if he would have enrolled his son into um, 
a sign language, a deaf school, if he would have enrolled his son and just accepted the fact that he was deaf and mute, then his son would have been that way. Uh, he didn't. He defied the odds. He fought and he had faith and he did something that most people said, you're crazy. And he got a lot of scrutiny for it. And so if we just back up and take this very lighthearted and we go, how is your health and fitness today? My hope is, is that you believe in yourself. And if you don't, that's why we read and that's why we learn. And that's why we plug into people that you look up to. And we listen to podcasts to get your mindset right, to believe that you can achieve your goals and your visions and the things that you want for your life, but you're going to have to take action, have the desire, have the belief, and let not other people come in and squish it. Don't let them squish it, right? So we're finishing chapter two, some great stories, and we'll dive into chapter three. And here, and remember, you don't have to keep up with me. This is a, your, this is your journey, <clears throat> but you can tune in just to get some nuggets. And if the only thing that you heard me say was our only limitations are those that we set up in our own minds. And if that's all you think about today, think about the limitations that you set up for yourself. And today's the day where you draw a line in the sand and go, I'm not going to believe that anymore. I will change. I have the power to change. I have the power of choice. I'm going to watch my words. I'm going to shift things to believe that I will achieve the goals I'm setting out to go after in time with consistency. As I'm working on my mindset, I'm going to see other things change in my life. So this is the book we're going over. We're starting chapter three tomorrow. Uh, I hope you took one little nugget away and that you can ponder on that and think about that all day today. So again, reach out with any questions that you have, whether it's keto or low carb or homeschooling or parenting or or anything, send me a message and I will send you a message back. I hope you have an incredible morning and we'll talk to you later.